This video covers a lesson found within Unit 8 called Functions in the third nine weeks. As we look down in the big pictures here for the third nine weeks, we can see that the lesson that we're going to actually do today is called Piecewise Functions, or covers Piecewise Functions, and it takes two days to complete. The actual lesson is called a Piecewise Function with a Discontinuous Domain. And you can see that they start off the lesson by giving you a graph of a piecewise function and also a table of values that includes most of the points that are found within that graph. Not all of them, though. So what the first page of a problems asks the students to do, it asks for certain characteristics like the range of the domain where it's decreasing and constant. It even brings in concavity. In number nine. Numbers 10 and 11 start asking for specific values of another function, uh, transformation function g, and it, it performs several transformations on the original function f that we were given the graph and the table for at the beginning of the lesson. It asks for where the maxes occur, the minimums, and it asks for what specific transformations are taking place. What I would like to do is work out number 12. It seems to be a little bit of a tougher problem for the students to work out. But to make it easy, I'm going to bring in a snippet from the original problem. So that we can refer to it to help us out. Now, part A or number 12, actually, let's talk about it first. It says g of x equals f of 2x. So we need to think about what this 2 is going to do to the graph and how that's going to affect the values. You've gone over, by, at, by this point, you've gone over the transformations that take place, and because this 2 is larger than 1, this should compress the graph horizontally by a factor of 2, which means the graph should end up looking half as wide as the original graph. But let's actually do the problem and see what's going on. If we do part A, it asks for g of negative 2. And it says g of x equals f of 2x. So that means this will be f of negative 4 if we multiply that negative 2 times 2. And then we have two options. We can either look at the graph at negative 4, and we can see that it goes up to 3, or we can use the table and see that at negative 4 it equals 3. So we know that g of negative 2 is going to be 3. Then it asks for g of negative 1. Well, g of negative 1, if I multiply the negative 1 by 2, like the equation suggests, that'll be f of negative 2 and f of negative 2 again you can look at the graph at negative 2 it's 0 and the table also includes this point it's 0 so that means now we have those two points for g now part b asks for the slope of g of x on the interval from 0 to 1 that means I'm going to come over here to do this. That means my x, my x's can go down bottom. It'll be 1 minus 0. And on top, I need to do g of 1 minus g of 0. Well, g of 1 would be the same thing as f of 2. And g of 0 will be the same thing as f of 0 since 2 times 0 is 0. And this will still be over 1 minus 0, which is 1. f of 2. If we look at the graph, f of 2 is 2. We can also see that from the table. So I know f of 2 is 2 minus f of 0. Again, from the graph, it's 0. And notice the table does not include 0, so you have to be dependent upon the graph here. So f of 0 is 0. And all that's over 1. 
So that means the slope is 2. Then what we need to do is sketch the graph of g of x. This is where this transformation comes in, where this represents a horizontal compression. It squishes it horizontally, is what I tell the kids. And it basically makes it half as big. It's, it's compressing it by a factor of two. So that means rather than having this point negative six, negative two, the X is only going to be half as big. So it'll be negative three, negative two. And then rather than having negative four, three, it'll be negative two, three. So basically all the X coordinates are getting halved. Then rather than having negative three, two, you're going to have negative one and a half, two. So this ends up looking like that and then coming down like this. Now we're ready to move on to the next piece. This is the point negative two, zero. So that'll turn into negative one, zero. This is the point zero, negative two. If you have zero, you still get zero. So we have that point. It is a hole going off the original. And so this is what that graph looks like. Then we have the point zero, zero. Again, if you half zero, you'll still get zero. So that's not changing. We have the point two, two. So that'll become one, two. And so this piece of the graph goes like this. Then we have two, three as a whole. That'll be one, three. Again, because we're halving the X coordinates. Then we have four, three, which will become two, three. So here's that piece. Then we have the hole at 4, 4, which means we have a hole at 2, 4 for G. We have a point at 2, 5, which will be 2 and a half, 5. So the next little piece of the graph looks like this. And then finally we have 6, 0, which becomes 3, 0. So this has got to come down pretty quickly. Let me redo that. So that's what that graph ends up looking like. And you can tell from how careful we had to be graphing that, that this could be really tough for the students to do. So this may be one that you want to work out with the students, just like I'm working it out with you. Now moving along in the lesson, they have them do some other transformations that are not as hard. They have them graph 13. Then they ask them some other questions. 14 and 15 are very similar to 10 and 11. But then, once you get past that, this is where it gets really tough. And this may be where you want to do some more work with the kids or let them make sure they're working in groups with some people that know what they're doing because Notice what they have to do for this right here. It tells that one portion of the graph was a cosine. And so what they're doing in number 16 is they're writing all the equations. They're writing the piecewise function for that graph. And so they have to write each equation for every piece. And they're telling them that this first piece or that this one piece from negative 6 to negative 4 is a cosine graph. So they're going to have to remember stuff from the very beginning of the semester, basically, to do that. And so number 16 can get pretty tough. Then on number 17, it asks for the roots of the function, which means the equations have to be correct in number 16 in order to do number 17 correctly. Now, even though they may get all the equations for number 17 or 16 correct, you might still want to let them use their calculator to help find some of the roots for some of those functions that they, that they come up with in 16. And then number 18 is they perform the transformation with the absolute value on the inside 
of the function and they need to know what transformation that does to the graph in order to be able to graph the function and look at part B. They have them come up with a new set of equations for this piecewise function.